it occurred to me that maybe this isn't quite a uh, coincidence. The administration knew that it was heading out, out of town uh, for these European talks <clears throat> with the G7, and they want the momentum or the lack of momentum, I guess, for the infrastructure bill uh, to be to continue on. So why not leave it with 10 senators, uh, five Republicans, five Democrats, who, of course, um, don't have the ability to, to pass anything because we need 10 Republicans to sign on to anything without a filibuster reform. So, I mean, it, it really seems to be... Um, I, I don't like theater. Uh, maybe is that the word I'm looking for, or just a, a, a huge waste of time, or um, you know, self-congratulatory, masturbatory nonsense that as yeah. well. There, I think that's all uh, rolled into it. I mean, that's that's not necessarily the image that I wanted to sort of put out there, but um, if that's uh, if that if that's yeah, that works as well. <laughs> um, I uh, and, and so we have a gang of ten, and. I think I mentioned this on uh, Friday. The Adam G- uh, Gentleson had a uh, great uh, tweet thread about this. He's the guy who wrote the book about um, the filibuster and um, giving a sort of a brief history of gangs of. And it never works out well for the Democrats. Um, it never works out well. Hopefully, and I don't know how this one, I mean, you know, like I say, the idea that there's going to be five other Republican senators, in addition to the five who agree with whatever they come up with, that are going to vote for this bill just seems to me to be absolute nonsense. Uh, I, I find it hard to believe that all five of these uh, Republicans who are negotiating, even if they sign off on it, or actually would ever vote for it. So um, on some level, this is just like filler. And... Maybe that filler makes some sense insofar as, you know, uh, Joe Biden's out of town. But um, hopefully, and Chuck Schumer has said this, that the reconciliation track is still going forward, which means that in the Senate committees, um, they are hammering out how they would expend. And we don't know what the final number would be, but. Presumably, it should be the $2.3 trillion that uh, Biden presented initially. Because if it's just going to be Democrats, the only person you're going to have to um, massage, as it were, Joe Manchin, uh, maybe Mark Kelly, Mark Warner, and uh, maybe uh, Kirsten Cinema. And uh, so hopefully we have these committees are working on how they would spend their various silos of dollars. Um, but we will get a better sense of that probably next week. This week, we're just going to hear stories about how, you know, these uh, 10 senators are coming uh, close to an, uh, an agreement. Here is Susan Collins. Uh, she is on, uh, what was the show this weekend? Face the Nation. Face the Nation, I think it was. And um, here is uh, just, I, I, I don't even know what to call this. Um, a fascinating admission as to who pays her bills or um just uh, sort of just one of the most bizarre reasonings that um i'm surprised this guy dickerson who, who, who's hosting doesn't fall out of his chair when he hears this and what about the sticky question of how to pay for all of this uh what where does it i've heard there's reports that it might include a gas tax increase There won't be a a gas tax increase, and we won't be undoing the 2017 uh, tax reform bill. Uh, Let me talk about three of the pay-fors. One is the implementation of an infrastructure financing authority. That's very similar to the state revolving funds that we use for sewer and water projects, and it's a bipartisan proposal that was first put forth by Senators Mark Warner and Roy Blunt. A second would be to repurpose some of the COVID funding that has not been spent uh, in the one point nine trillion dollar package that was enacted in March. There were restrictions on what the funding could be used for. It could be used for water, sewer and broadband. We would make it more flexible so it could be used for infrastructure projects. And third, 
there would be a provision for electric vehicles to pay their fair share of using our roads and bridges. Right now, they are literally free riders because they're not paying any gas tax. So those are three of the provisions that we've taken a look at. She sounds like she's been struck by lightning. Um, well, I, I mean, I, 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 what, what, what surprised me is that uh, Dickerson does, is not struck by lightning at that point. Because I just want to make it clear what she's suggesting here. Um, we would absolutely not tax gas. Gas being um, a fossil fuel. Which is maybe she's not aware of in Maine. Although uh, some of their growing zones have literally changed over the past 20 years. Uh, They've gotten warmer. I mean, like they can't produce the same amount of maple syrup because of of something called climate change, which you may be familiar with. So we would not raise the gas tax. We would raise an electric car tax, which incidentally, uh, electric cars is one of the ways that we would fight climate change yeah i'm talking not to you remedially like this because you know this but i am talking to whoever needs to hear this so that one of our senators can find out but i mean part of this though is just what what does this process even mean i mean like why are we even having her on sunday talk shows to talk about the pay fors and what makes up the content of this fan- fantasy bill? I mean, there's this is a process that is going to evaporate within two or three weeks. There's going to be nothing that comes of it. It's only just a way for the Collinses and the Murkowskis and the Romneys and the Cinemas to get their faces out there and perform bipartisanship when this is not going to go anywhere since we already know that Biden has ended negotiations with the Republicans. End of story. Well, and, and, and it's it's almost worse than that, too, because on some level, it really obscures what the dynamic is in Washington. And so it's not necessarily helpful uh, as a political matter for, for Democrats, uh, broadly speaking. Um, it is not terribly helpful for the public uh, to get this misunderstanding of what is going on. And uh, so it is um, it is the worst of all possible worlds. It's and, theater to uphold this mythology of bipartisanship that upholds senators like her. Yes, it's a, it's absurd, and um, you know, it's a self-licking ice cream cone is uh, amazing on some level. And but it'll be interesting to see, like you know, wait. So so what happens? We bring up this bill, and the uh, the Republicans shoot it down, and then we go into reconciliation. I mean, if that's what it takes, then that's what it takes.